and we're back. I was listening to the newest Table Talk with JM today, and something that really stuck out to me was him saying, happy lifters train harder. And the reason it stuck out so much is that it is something that I realized too late in my career, or not that it's the end of my career yet, but I wish I would have realized it much, much, much sooner because when I was a kid, I was all rah, 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 hardcore, train hard, be angry because being angrier at the barbell means that you care more. And I thought that in a way that that is how you had to be to succeed at lifting. And when I realized that I could have fun and train and having fun while training made my training more productive, it was almost the most freeing realization I've ever had because it made the gym so much better. And when I was all, you know, rah, rah, hardcore, anger, grouchy, headbutt wall, Seth, not only was I making myself miserable, but in a way I was making everyone else around me miserable just because I was projecting the, you need to be this in order to be good at powerlifting. And I just wish I realized how wrong I was about that sooner. Because if we can have fun and if we can enjoy what we're doing, we're going to be able to work harder at it. Like having fun blasting speed work makes me want to blast speed work harder. Having fun nailing my max effort makes me want to nail my max effort better. Having fun catching huge pumps on accessories makes me want to catch bigger pumps and be more precise when I'm training accessories. And it all just like compounds and makes it better and better and better and better and better. And if you guys could find that if you haven't, you will enjoy training so much more and you will get so much more better. And like, I'm silly, I'm kind of dorky, a little bit goofy, and I like to have fun. And that's not to say that I am not taking training seriously because I am taking it very seriously and I hope that is evident, but I'm also trying to take it seriously in a way that is lighthearted, that allows me to enjoy it. And one of the things that I was the most self-conscious about when I was starting this vlog process is that I was worried that someone was gonna talk shit because they thought, because I was silly, that I wasn't taking training seriously enough. And it kind of just dawned on me that if I am doing this, and if I do know that you can have fun and train hard, it's almost in a way my responsibility to show that you can have fun and train hard. Because again, it's something that I wish I would have realized so much sooner in my career, rather than just conforming to the powerlifting needs to be hardcore attitude. So anyways, it is speed bench day. So let's get to speed benching and have some fun while doing it. All right, round one, about to go down, running the exact same wave structure as last wave, exact same weights. You don't always need to progress loading and speed work, but what you need to do is if you're repeating a wave, go into the next one with the intent to make everything move better. And for those of you who aren't up to it, I'm doing three rounds of three sets of clusters of three reps. Hope that made sense, but basically I'm gonna go close three reps, mid three reps, wide three reps, shake it out, rest for a minute or so, get back in, repeat, and do that for three total rounds. So round one. And depending on like where I am in the weeks of a speed work wave, I might be like week three is the hardest because it's the heaviest and you're carrying fatigue from week one and week two. But when I'm on week one, I'm like, <sighs> Week one's the hardest because week three was the heaviest and I'd carry the fatigue from week three that I gotta bring into the week one, even though it is light. But either way, still gotta push freaking hard. Bah. Last one, freaking fast, or as fast as a pack is gonna let me press, but freaking fast. Bah.
I don't know how those looked yet, but I'm actually pretty darn okay with how they felt. Like it felt like I was doing a better job of really posting up on the lats and triceps than it was previous weeks. Felt like I had a little more pace on the eccentric as well as the concentric. So definitely can not complain. On to the next. The final frontier, the last realm of really sketchy on the pec. Ran 205 on the inclines last week. Just did 205 for a last warm up. So 225, see where we get. It feels so heavy up here. Feels okay down here. Heavy through the middle. At least the eccentric isn't exceptionally sketchy. That was actually okay. Probably gonna go better next set if I don't talk while I'm pressing, so. And like, yeah, I get it. 225 on incline, not very good in the grand scheme of things, but for being less than six months after getting my whole pec ripped off and screwed back into my humerus, pretty okay with it. And the fact that it isn't good is exciting because it means that I can get better and the better that I get at it, the better bench is going to continue coming back. Anyways, I figure I've exhausted the flat jams on my Friday for now. So I'm gonna pivot, tricep work up, a little bit and run some incline jams today. Real narrow grip and you try to put it all in the triceps or as much as I can in the triceps. <sighs> incline jam just feels nice. Makes it so intuitive to load the tries. Fat freaking elbows. Ah. Tripods in the way of my legs. We'll see. And like, I haven't ran the single push downs for a little while, so I figured I'd bring them back. And when I'm doing these, I'm trying to like lean my torso forward slightly. So at the bottom, my elbow is as bent as it can get. And I don't have the protractor out, but I wanna make sure that it's as close to a 90 degree angle between my forearm and the cable as possible. And that'll ensure that in the most stretched position, there is the most mechanical disadvantage on the tricep. So it is getting the crap loaded out of it down there. And it just feels freaking wonderful in the worst way possible. Ooh. And like running JMs into this is like, oh, because that meaty part at the bottom of the tricep right by the elbow is already just like, 
ah, from the JMs. And now it's like, eh. I meant to go higher pitched, but I couldn't do it with the grunt. All right. down If we are trying to catch more relative lat on our pull downs, what we gotta do is think about the differences in anatomy between the lats and the teres group. And what that really comes down to is that the lat originates on the rib cage, crosses over the shoulder blade before it attaches to the arm, whereas the teres group originates on the shoulder blade and then just goes right to the arm. So if we're trying to get more lat in the pull down, if we start the pull down by setting our scap down first, it's going to initiate with the lat and we should be able to carry a better lat contraction through the whole motion. And doing pull downs like that is what's going to teach you to learn how to feel the lat and use the lat when you're getting your upper back set on squats. And I know I'm doing it right if I'm feeling it low on the rib cage. Another dirty superset that I used to run when I was a kid with big delts was front raises straight into, I'm gonna cut to what I'm gonna do next. Okay, ready for the jump cut? Straight into face pulls. And like, are blast strap face pulls ideal? I don't know, but I do know that I don't have room to do a real face pull on the pull down tower, so. This feels good, and it's gonna get the job done good enough. And that job is dirty delt and upper back pump. And like, bodybuilding purposes, like, it's not a very precise exercise, so it might not be the best thing as a bodybuilder, but as a powerlifter, trying to just get good at contracting upper back in general so we can use it better on the lifts, it's gonna do the trick. Oh. <sighs> feel like I'm almost running out of anything interesting to say while doing bicep curls, but I don't know. Squeeze. <laughs> It'll get more fun once we get into the set. <sighs> yeah, it's getting fun. <sighs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, 
nasty birds. The nice thing about preachers is that, preachers, concentration curls, is that the dumbbell is very close to the floor, so I'm less worried about the sketchy thing coming apart as I curl. <sighs> Tightening it up a little bit, just in case, because I really don't want plates Falling on my toes, even if it's only from a couple inches. <sighs> Fuck. These things better grow. Gross. And this is how Dan Bell runs his hammer curls bent over with the arm hanging. I don't know if there's anything too fancy to it, but feels nice. And I figured it'd be a fun change. So we're running it. Lefty. This song got copyright claimed last time it was in the background. So I'm just going to babble. Thinking about curls. Big squeeze. Juicy arms. Juicy forearms. Juicy breaking radialis. Thank God I don't got to come up with things to say anymore. And end of the session on a Tuesday, so... You know, that means more spread eagles. And the trick to these is to try to flex your quads hard the entire time so that you're not cheating by bending your knees These are feeling good, which is making me very excited to squat on the weekend. <sighs> so, I don't know how to bridge into this, but it kind of ties back into what we're talking about at the beginning, where a lifter who is happier will train harder. A lifter who is happier will give you more. A lifter who is happier will end up doing better. And my grandfather's funeral was on Sunday. And it was an interesting experience because like the overall vibe there was one more of gratitude than of grieving. It was everyone being grateful to have known him, to have learned from him, to have spent time around him. And I think that what that really comes down to is that everyone in the room knew and recognized that 
he got to do exactly what he wanted with his life and he loved every moment of it. He loved working on the farm. My mom read the eulogy, she gave the eulogy, and a line that she said throughout was, and he was happy to be working. And that was absolutely true. Like one of my fondest memories growing up was spending time working with him because he made work fun. Even though it was freaking hard work, he made it fun to put an effort, to take pride in what you were doing and to come home at the end of a very long day, absolutely smoked. And then he made it fun to get up the next day and do it all over again. And I think like being part of that growing up, it kind of like in a way it instilled a desire to do the same in a way. And obviously I'm not on the farm. I'm not farming. I'm not doing physical work of that sort in any sense right now. But I think what this weekend made me realize is that I'm on the right path doing what I'm doing because doing what I'm doing is something that I really do enjoy. And I think like if I were to sum up what I'm doing right now in one sentence, it's just trying to make powerlifting a better place. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for being part of this journey. Thank you guys for passing on what was passed on to me so I can pass it on to you and just continue the cycle. So thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful rest of your night.